Hello and welcome to this latest video editing quick tip tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to cover how to effectively reduce a drone's base ISO below 100. We all know that you shouldn't increase ISO unless absolutely necessary because of the noise. But because of a drone sensor, even at 100 ISO, the image is really noisy as you can see in these images. What I'm going to show you as a trick to effectively reduce that ISO and get the clean footage on the left rather than the noisy footage on the right. So let's dive in. Before I show you how to get the best settings for your DJI Mini 2 or any other drone that you fly, it's important to understand why the technique works so that you don't just dismiss it as snake oil and not bother trying it because this is something that if you want the best video settings, photo settings, the best cinematic settings, this is a technique that you really should be adopting. The graphic on screen might seem scary and overwhelming, but it's simply the histogram of a digital camera. And for those that aren't familiar with it, I'll just quickly explain it. The histogram shows across the bottom the brightness of various pixels in the image and then up the side is how many pixels are in that brightness level. So, for example, in this histogram, there's very little data over at the highlights level, and there's a lot of data down in the shadows. A lot of drones, such as the DJI Mini 2, have an 8-bit sensor. Even if your drone has a 10-bit sensor, the numbers on screen will change, but the principle is exactly the same. I apologise for the science lesson, but this next part is where the magic happens and it's probably going to shock a lot of photographers, so just bear with me. An 8-bit digital sensor can only record 256 shades of each colour, red, green and blue. And what most people don't realise is that the sensor allocates half of those levels to the first stop of brightness, half of the remaining levels to the next stop down, half of what remains to the stop below that, etc. So as you can see from the graphic, the highest level has 128 levels of red, 128 levels of green, 128 levels of blue, whereas in the darkest region, it might only have eight levels of red, green, and blue. To further drive the point home and add a bit more context and clarity to what this all means, the brightest stop of an 8-bit sensor can record just over two million colours. If you drop down just one stop, that drops significantly to only 262,000 colours. The next stop darker is even further down to 32,000 colours. Another stop down and you're down to 4,000 colours. Another stop down and you're down to only 512 colours. Now, if you've made it this far through the tutorial, well done. I know there's been a lot of science and math, but that's all done with now. And it's important to understand how a digital sensor works so that you know how to apply the technique that I'm just about to show. You're probably wondering, it's all well and good learning all this, but what does it actually mean? Well, if we look at the graphic, that bottom dark area of the histogram has got a massive amount of pixels from your image, but it's only got 512 colours in all of those pixels. And that is why the dark areas of your image have so little detail and if you try and bring that detail out the image falls apart think of it like a piece of paper a little strip of paper if you try and stretch that strip of paper it's just going to tear and that's what happens to your data when it's been recorded at the bottom end of your camera's sensor it just can't be stretched it will just tear and fall apart and that's why you get banding in your images at the opposite end of the scale if you look at this histogram there's no data in the top stop of the sensor's range, which means two million colours have just been thrown away. So to put this technique into practice, you need to have the histogram display on your screen. You, you find that within settings, uh, depending which drone you've got, it should be easy enough to find it and get it on screen. So you need to be looking at that before you press record or take photo. You can even apply this technique if you're using automatic exposure because the settings should have an adjustment where you can add or deduct a certain amount of stops from the automatic exposure. So what you need to do is point the camera at the bright
brightest part of the scene you're about to film or take a photograph of and then adjust the exposure to push the histogram as far to the right as it'll go without clipping you'll know when you're clipping because a big white line will suddenly come up the right hand side of the histogram now in case you're thinking isn't this just following what the camera suggests the exposure should be no it isn't because digital cameras try the best to give you the proper exposure but it's normally erring on the side of safety so in general you can normally increase the exposure by one stop maybe two stops without blowing out any highlights now the way you should increase the exposure or decrease it is by using the shutter speed never adjust the ISO above base ISO because otherwise you're defeating the object. You're bringing noise in by increasing the ISO from 100 to 200 or 400. So never change the ISO, only shutter speed. In case you're still thinking, is this really worth it? Should I bother? Just take a look at the previous graphic again. If you can increase your exposure by one stop, you're potentially increasing the data in every area of your image by a factor of eight. That's right, eight times as much data in each area of the image. If you can increase your exposure by two stops, then you're going to get 64 times the amount of data that you would have done by just following the camera's suggested exposure. So the bottom line is, always make sure you're fully using the histogram up to the right-hand side, and then you'll always be maximising the amount of data in your footage or your image and getting the best results possible. So thank you for watching. I hope you found this useful. If there's anything you're not clear on, then drop me a note in the comments and I'll answer your question as best I can. If you don't want to miss out on future tutorials, then subscribe to my channel. Check out the latest video that's been suggested. Hit the thumbs up so that other people can find this on YouTube and check out my channel playlists for other videos. Thank you very much.